Will you lift your hands in worship tonight? Come on, lift them up high. God has been good to you. Tell somebody next to you, God has been good to us. Let's worship the King.
still works. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Still play. 
Hallelujah. 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 Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. Glory to God. 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 Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I am going to talk just for um, a little while, um, a little while, um, and um, share a few things with you. Um, it's interesting of what uh, can happen um, in different kinds of atmospheres. North Carolina is going through an atmosphere we have to understand what atmosphere is able to bring. Um, things are shifting around us. Um, when a storm comes, it, it takes something out and it brings something in. Um, and um, beside you, somebody's got something coming in. Um, and if you ain't got nothing coming in, please don't say nothing for the rest of the night. Um, but if you know you got favor, blessings, miracles, prosperity coming in. Hit somebody and tell them I got something coming in. Uh, the book of Joshua, the 11th chapter, Joshua 11 verses 6 um, through 15. Um, mm -hmm. Joshua, the 11th chapter, verses 6. Mm. Interesting. Um, through verse 15. Um, it is my custom, if you would, um, that we stand for the reading of the word, if you would just oblige me on tonight, if you're able. Um, Joshua 11, 6 through 15. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say hold up. Amen. All right. If you don't have it, then just open your Bible and look on screen and act like you got it. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Joshua, and be not afraid. You have to watch the words because of them are for tomorrow about this time. Will I deliver them up all slain before Israel? Tomorrow about this time, he's going to deliver your enemies all of them up all slain right before you thou shalt how their horses um, what does that mean that means then that your responsibility is to take the horses and cut their hamstrings so that your enemies are not able to run away on horseback so while I'm slaying them I want you to make sure that you cut all of the hamstrings of the horses so they can't get away um, and burn their chariots with fire so Joshua came and all the people of war with him now then for them to do that they have to be on one accord um, do I have people of war in here all right, um, and the scripture then says, mm -hmm. uh, uh, against them by the waters of, watch this, and Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into uh, the hand of Israel, um, who smote them and chased them unto um, great Zidon, um, that is um, Jezebel's birthplace, 
and and unto Ms. Um, Ref Apoth um, Mian, um, and unto all of Mispa uh, eastward, and they um, smote them until uh, they left them none remaining. Uh, tell somebody beside you, please take no prisoners. <laughs> and Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. Um, he hoed the horses um, and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua um, at that time turned back and took Hazar and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazar before time was um, the head of those kingdoms and they smote all the souls that, that were therein with the edge of the sword utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe um, and he burnt Hazar with fire um, and all the cities of those kings and all those kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword and he utterly destroyed them um, as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded but as for the cities that stood still in their strength Israel burned not um, of them save Hazor only that did Joshua burn all the spoil of these cities and the cattle the children um, of Israel took for a prey unto themselves but every man um, they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them and neither left they um, any to breathe um, last verse and the Lord commanded um, as the Lord commanded Moses his servant so did uh, Moses command Joshua and so did Joshua he left nothing undone for all that um, the Lord commanded um, Moses. If you would tell somebody beside you, take it all and leave nothing undone. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A couple of things that um, I have to address. Um, if um, you've never heard me preach before, um, I spend the beginning of my message lecturing. Um, because it's important to me that people are informed before they get joy. Um, so if you will oblige me just for about 15 minutes to lecture and then when preach comes, we'll see what happens. Um, the first thing that we have to look at is um, this whole process of the assignment of what Joshua has to do. Um, he has in, by the time we get to the 11th chapter, um, of this book. Um, he has already, if you uh, read it, um, he's already um, taken, destroyed, and consumed uh, all of the cities and villages of the southern kingdom. And the scripture said that he did all of them at one time. All of them at one time. He went from one victory to another victory to another victory to another victory. And he did all of it at one time. The next thing that happens is, is that he takes then a break, a sila moment. And after he takes that sila moment, then he understands that he has now the assignment now to take the northern kingdom. God has given all of Canaan to Israel. Joshua, who is now their leader, he knows that he has an assignment and he knows that he cannot get distracted. He also has some enemies that he's going to have to overcome. For those of you that are writing, this is a part of my lecture time. So if you would just, um, uh, for those of you that are writing, take a look at this first verse. It says, and it came to pass with when um, Jabin king of Hazor um, had heard those things. And what did he hear? He heard that Joshua had defeated all in the southern um, said that he not only has defeated all of those in the southern kingdom, but ever since he came into Jericho, he's been conquering, conquering, conquering. And so now Hazor says, um, or I'm sorry, Jabin says, who is over Hazor, he says, listen, he says, we're going to have to pull all of the kings together to fight against Israel if we're going to be effective. Now, this is an issue. The issue is, is that our enemies cannot be more united than we are. 
if your enemies are more united than you are, then your enemies will be more effective in what they do. And that means that we have to have the same way, process of thinking. Um, King Jabin, and for those of you that are writing, his name, Jabin, means he will understand. He is over a city named Hazar. Hazar means fenced. It means a castle. Um, so it is from the idea of circling something and then making sure that it is walled in. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Jabin, who is king over Hazar, his name means he understands. What does he understand? He understands how to circle you and block you in. So now he has then an effective way of blocking you from the calling, anointing, and destiny that is over your life. It is a very frustrating thing to know where you're supposed to be but don't know how you're going to get there. It's frustrating when you are in a spot within your life but you feel like you're going circles. And as you feel like you're going in circles, um, your time is wasting because you're seeing the same tree, the same river, the same people. Um, and I don't want to anger anyone here, but you have to remember something. If you continue to see the same people, there is no possibility of elevating. And the reason being is because if those people could elevate you, then they would have. But you have to have people that are what I call divine connections that God has to then connect you with. However, if you have people that specialize in understanding how to block you, then what you have is you have so-called friends that don't want you to make it because they know if you do, you're going to leave them because they are not qualified to go where you're going so now let's take a look at it so now he has to then deal with Jabin who is over Hazar but then Jabin who is over Hazar he then sends it to Jabab king of Madan now understand it because Jabab his name means crying out it means to shout it's a place where the wild beast cry out so now Jabab is a king but he specializes is in the wild. Um, he's an individual that is effective in taking you out of character. Now understand, if somebody takes you out of character, you miss your blessing. Um, it's a hard thing. People say um, that it's hard um, to fight. It's really not hard to fight. It's easy to fight. Let me tell you what is hard. It's hard to hold your peace. Um, that's what it's hard. It's hard to hold your peace. Watch this. When you have plenty to say, uh, God help me up in here. Let's look at it. Uh, because there are some people that you look at them and stare. And they're looking at you saying, well, what you staring at me for? Because I'm thinking about all the things I want to say and my Holy Ghost won't let me say because I've come too far to miss this. I can't flunk this test again. Uh, Lord have mercy. Tell somebody I can't flunk this. I can't. And so here it is that Jabab, and he is over um, the city of Madan. It means contention. It means strife. Think about it. He is a king that is designed to get you out of your character, to make you act wild in the midst of contention so that you miss opportunity. Unity. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it because now he says then that, that there is another king. This king is named Shimron. Shimron. Um, also, you have then you have king of Shimron. You also have the king of Akish. Akish. And watch this now. You have both of these uh, kingdoms. Look at this. Shimron means vigilant guardian. Here it is. Akishef. I'm sorry. Means enchantment. Now let me put them together because here it is that Shimron. 
Omicron vigilant guardian means then that after you get in trouble, you have a group that guards you now from getting out of the trouble. There are some people that once you get in it, they want to trap you in it and they don't want you to get out. Now it's, they got to be careful because if you push me against a wall um, and I have to get out, then that, that means then that either I'm going to have to negotiate or I'm going to have to get out of character. I can't get out of character because I've got to make sure that I get what God has promised. Here it is now. The next city means enchantment, but here is the issue. It is a different kind of enchantment. It is a prayer that uses enchantment. Now there is a problem because now you have some people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Everybody Everybody that goes to church, everybody that comes and waves their hand and says that they're praying for you is not praying the right kind of prayer. Uh, Lord have mercy. Some people have that enchantment, witchcraft, manipulating kind of spirit because they're trying to keep you stuck. Uh, do you have somebody you can hit beside you? Hit them and tell them I can't be stuck. I can't. Uh, I can't. Be. I can't be stuck um, because now I have to preach. I have to move forward. Now understand all of these kings and these cities are in, look at verse 2, they are in an environment. This is very important for us to take a look at. They are in an environment. Look at the environments that they're in because they're in the mountains and switch this. They're in the mountains and the plains. I don't know what the difference is, okay. But they're in the mountains and the plains of, watch the second verse, Shinaroth. Those of you that are writing, I'm just about maybe um, five minutes um, into um, before I finish lecturing. So let's look at this. They're, they're in the plains and in the mountains of Shinaroth. Um, they're in the valleys and in the borders of Dor. Um, Shinaroth means the mountains and the valleys of harps. That means then that you got to fight all of these kings to get into an atmosphere that you can control and take over. Now, I want you to think about this because where they are conquering is where David is going to rule years later. And so now it is important for then one generation to set up for the next generation that is to come. That means then that we want the land, but we've got to take out the inhabitants because if we don't take out the inhabitants the land will have the wrong spirit the land is what we need anytime you got land you got wealth this is why it, it I don't even care and I know some of you all uh, may not like the way that I say this but even in struggling areas where nobody wants to get and you have boarded up places you need to figure out a way to negotiate and buy all of that have you not noticed that cities wait until places Places are all torn down they buy all the land for cheap and then they make that a wealthy environment should it not be in the mindset of the people of God the pastors and leaders of the church and the kingdom of God to have that kind of mindset to start taking over everything that is torn down restoring it so that we can build a different kind of economic wealth so there can be a divine wealth transfer to all of us I'm trying to tell you that you have an anointing of wealth on your life I know some of y'all are saying well maybe I don't no 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 you do let me explain to you how you know that there is a wealth anointing on your life have you noticed that God has never changed your taste and your taste is more expensive than your pocket all right but this is not for everybody this is only for a couple of people how many of y'all know you can't even afford your kind of taste um, you look at houses and say that's what I want you look at a certain car and say no 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 that's it right there you got you see certain clothes and say that that no that that's that's what I'm talking about and you see that and then you see the price and you say alright Jesus you need to help me on this because and you start prophesying one day but see please understand what God never does have you noticed that God never takes your taste so if he doesn't take your 
taste that means he's gonna change your income all right now let's look at it let's think about it let's think about it uh, this is not for everybody this is only for those of you all that know that where you are is not where you are staying high five somebody and tell them I'm going higher than I've ever been in my life so let's let's look at this let's look at this let's look at this because now we have to then get we have to get this harp area this this is a peaceful environment we have to get door door means habitation so that means this is where we're going to live I need y'all to get it in your spirit I know that you got some places in the city that you live in that you want to live in that neighborhood we're on your way to your house you need to make a detour past that neighborhood and prophesy to the streets and say I'm coming because somebody in that neighborhood is going to lose that house because you got to have it y'all don't like the way that I'm talking but the wealth of the unjust is laid up y'all do not like it but let's look at it it's for the just somebody has got to be wealthy enough to displease God so that God can then cause them to go into foreclosure so you can live exactly where you're supposed to live and he can give you the house on wholesale this ain't for everybody I just need for about maybe a hundred of y'all that's ready to have church high five somebody and tell them we're going higher than we've ever been in our life no 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 I need you to high five another millionaire you ain't high five and broke folk tonight I need you to high five somebody and tell them I told you we're going higher than we've ever been in our life uh, uh, God help me help me yes. uh, this ain't for everybody this is only for those of you all that are getting ready for, to, to understand that your supervisor is getting ready to be your employee uh, you better understand it, that this is a divine kind of shift this is why you had to go from the bottom and work your way up because you got to know every area of the company that you're getting ready to own I said high five somebody that's a multi-millionaire and tell them we're going higher than we've ever been in our life Please understand it. Please understand it. Now, in order to do this, come on, y'all, sit down just for a second. We're just lecturing right now. Because in order to do this, you're going to have to have a certain kind of mindset. You're going to have to have a unity and a dominion mindset. Those of you that are writing, please write it down. You're going to have to have a unity and dominion mindset. Please understand the value of what's in you. Ah! Watch this. The value of what's in you. It's on the inside of you you have a sleeping giant that you got to wake up you have something in you that you know is there um, it does not activate just in any environment the scripture says in Proverbs 18 he says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men the reason that you don't get excited much is because the people that you're around are not great enough to wake up your gift uh, God help us uh, your gift is for great folk it ain't for practicing or novel kind of people you are prepared for something that your grandmama prayed for you are prepared for something that your great granddaddy suffered for and now you got to live in it you Lord have mercy some of you all as you were struggling when you were a child and now you're living better than your family ever thought that you would live you know why you go through the challenges that you do because general curse Lord have mercy generational curse breakers don't have life easy you have to fight you have to war you have to go through you have to be betrayed you got to be lied on and you and the, the, the house has got to come down on you and you still come out with strength I need somebody to talk to me up in here because please understand I don't care about this Yo, the, those of y'all that understand when you think about this hurricane this hurricane is a confirmation to you the scripture says and when the enemy comes in like a the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard something is getting ready to happen that the devil was not expecting what he meant for your evil God is about to make it good I told you to high five somebody that's a multi-millionaire and tell them something's getting ready to come to us I said, no 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 high five them to your hand sting that's the hand that the check is coming in that's the hand that's gonna sign contracts I said high five them and tell them you're going higher than you ever been in your life
Come on, come on. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Come on, y'all. Sit down just for a second. You stand up again. It's going to be trouble up in here. Don't start nothing. It won't be nothing. But you stand up again. I promise you it's going to be a problem. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Because we have to have the dominion mindset. Somebody holler dominion. No, no, no. Open up your mouth and holler dominion. I got to have that dominion mindset. See, the dominion mindset causes you to separate from people. I mean, it's not that you don't like them anymore. We just think differently. We're just not going in the same places. See, eagles have no business being around pigeons. Pigeons can't fly high enough for your way of thinking. Oh, Lord have mercy. Do I have any eagles up in here? Uh, and he didn't say you shall mount up on wings like a pigeon. He said you'll mount up on wings like a Oh Lord have mercy. I need some eagles to open up your mouth and scream. <laughs> Somebody holler dominion mindset. Please understand it. Come on, y'all. Let's look. Let's look. We got to get informed before we got to have joy. So look at Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse. He says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let him, let, watch this, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle. Watch this. Over the, all the earth, over everything that creepeth upon the earth. Let's look at it from a different way. Number one, for those of you that are writing the word dominion means to rule. It means dominate. It means subjugate I gotta shift your thinking it means rule it means dominate it means subjugate God says I've given you this kind of mind I've given you this kind of spirit you're not the spirit of a follower you're the spirit of a leader leaders even know how to follow but watch this leaders don't just follow anybody leaders follow leaders your, your, your leaders follow people you can't excite a leader just because you got Lord have mercy a title you, ex you, you excite leaders when you got a vision because leaders ain't following nobody see that's why you are different from everybody because you have to have a leader environment a leader atmosphere where are my leaders at uh, you know, somebody holler take dominion I said say it strong take dominion he said now watch this he said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and watch what he says and let them have a dominion over stop let them have dominion over stop let them have dominion over stop now I need you to see this because of what he's telling them they're gonna have dominion over is a kingdoms mindsets and environments one more time kingdoms mindsets and environments so let's look at it he said fish of the sea you cannot have dominion over the fish if you don't have dominion over the environment that the fish is in so I have dominion over the fish of the sea all right that is one kingdom that is one mindset that is one environment what is the next level he said the fowl of the air he says I don't want you just to have a, a dominion over the fowl I want you to have dominion over the air now I know the scripture says that Satan is the prince and the power of the air but if you look at the definition of that word air it means low density he does not have power over high density he is an AM Lord have mercy you are an FM y'all don't like the way that I'm talking so you have to deal with the fact that he is low density he says that cattle watch this um, he says all of the earth now when he said cattle he's talking about that that is on the earth he says and when he's dealing with all the earth he's talking about what's on the earth he says so what I'm doing I'm giving your dominion over everything that is walking on the earth and that is on top of it but then he shifts it he says in every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth now you're dealing with anything that is sliding in the earth y'all don't like it let's take a look at it because now you got to deal with things that you can't see you got to deal with the worms you got to deal with the snakes you got to deal with the caterpillars you got to deal with everything that goes into holes please understand this is why this flood came because a worm and a snake that lives in a hole will stay there until it's overrun with water and when it's overrun with water then it pushes all of them out see God says before I bless you he says I gotta drive every snake out of your environment so that I can expose them for what they are to take you where you're going because when I bless you you can't bless haters fakers you got to bless people that really got 
got your back and support you. There are some people that just hanging on because they know a blessing is coming, but the reason that God hasn't given you the blessing is because you got to shake them off like Paul did the snake in the fire. I wish I was preaching to somebody up in here. High five somebody and tell them, shake the snake off. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. He says, all right, let's take a look at it, y'all. He says, so God created man in his image, his own image. And in the image of God created he him, male and female. Created he them. Take a look at it. Watch it. Take a look at it. Male and female are operated, creating and created in the image of God. Please write it down. Image created. We are image created. We are image created. The word image means resemblance please understand that the image means dominates so let's look at it you cannot dominate in your image you must dominate in his image the miracle ain't coming in your image the miracle is coming when you know what his image is God is not insecure he is not weak he is not doubtful he does not second guess himself the moment that he says something he looks at it it is done and then he says it is good God does not second guess himself the Bible says in the book of James the first chapter that a double minded man will become unstable in all of his ways I cannot allow myself to second guess myself because that means I'm not operating in the image of God if I'm operating in the image of God I said it that settles it it's sealed and the scripture says according to the book of Job the 22nd chapter he says whatever you declare God will establish so that means if I have the nerve, the faith, and the gumption to bring it up out of my mouth, God said, I'm going to do it. Did he not say in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter to Peter, he says, because you got the keys to the kingdom, whatsoever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, I will loose in heaven. This is why when you declare something out of your mouth tonight, it is on its way before you leave church. This is why when you declare something out of your mouth, it is manifesting before you walk out of this service and I'm telling you that while you're praising God your praise is going to set an atmosphere that while you're praising God what you're praising him for is going to be at the door when you get home you better have that kind of mindset because it is on its way hit somebody and tell them I want it all oh no 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 I don't talk to scared people I talk to people that got faith somebody holler I want it all there's a whole bunch of places that are flooded but when you look at the places that are flooded by the time the water goes down you're looking at neighborhoods you're getting ready to own look at somebody and tell them I want it all you act like you're scared to talk to somebody because you can't get in the mindset of working for people for the rest of your life because God's got something greater for you you got a job you're working at a job that you're making them money with your intelligence but God is getting ready to give you the strength and the ability to be able to do it yourself it is your name that's going to be on the building. It is your name that's going to be signing Lord have mercy paychecks. It is your name that is going to be releasing scholarships. It is your name that is going to cause people to be debt free. It is your name that favor is getting ready to be released in the atmosphere. I need those people in here that understand that favor is getting ready to drop on you like a hammer. Go to giving God glory because things are getting ready to shift in your life. Good God, yes, sir. Good God, yes, sir. Give me about 17 more minutes and we got to get up out of here. Please understand what he says because you have to look at the fact that it is for the male and for the female that is operating in the image of God. The Bible says that all of creation, all of your vision, all of your promise, everything that you've been believing God for, travaileth in pain, waiting together until now. Waiting for what? For the manifestation of the sons of God. The, the, everything that you believe in God for is waiting on you to realize who you are you are not the last you are first you are not the individual that is the borrower you are the lender I feel like talking to somebody up in here I need you to see that God is just not gonna fix your credit he's gonna fix your economy I feel Lord have mercy you got to understand that you are bigger than the average he told Jacob he says your name is no longer Jacob and now I'm getting ready to call you Israel please understand that you have to say 
set yourself to have the mindset of being a whole nation did you hear what I just said you are not just a person walking you are a nation walking do you have scripture for that sure I do and one saint can put a thousand devils to flight and two ten thousand you are a walking army I need somebody that understands the value of your worship your praise and the fact that you have been through hell because you are heaven bound you got the same mindset of David you, you're looking at God and saying yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil your mindset is like Job though you slay me yet will I trust you because God has to know that he can trust you with wealth if he can't trust you in being broke and still come in the church he can't trust you with wealth and still come in the church but if I can praise God and I ain't got nothing in my pocket I know how to praise God when every bill is paid I need somebody in here that is a generational curse breaker to open up your mouth and go to Shabbat in God right now I said open up your mouth and Shabbat God because blessing is getting ready to hit you See, some of y'all don't want to scream, but let me say it to you like this. They tell me, Bishop, that if you go to a mountain that is very high and it has thin snow on top of it, they tell you don't say nothing because if you scream, what's up top is going to come straight down because of the vibration. If you Shabbat God... somebody to open up your mouth and let the devil know that he did not get what he thought he got Shabbat God Huh. Uh, double high five somebody and tell them it's coming quickly no 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 prophesy and tell them before this month is out it's gonna be in our hand huh? he told male and female to be fruitful multiply and to replenish the earth the word fruitful multiply and replenish ain't talking about having babies have more babies and have more 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 babies he said no be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth be fruitful means to bear fruit it means to grow and it means to increase God said I don't want you to stop until you increase in every area of your life you cannot increase in one area and leave the other areas in a deficit because that is an unbalanced life you have to increase in every area of your life you got favor at the house and at the job you got favor at the mall and in the church everywhere you go even if it's a country that they don't speak your language they will Lord have mercy your interpreter will look at you and say that means whatever you want it's all right with us y'all don't like the way that I'm talking hit somebody and tell them I want it all he says not only be fruitful but he says multiply the word multiply means become great they've got a saying out here they won't let me be great please understand they ain't got the power to let you do nothing you become great because of and in spite of think about it the people